There are jobs in construction right now because, number one, the economy is great. But you add to that the, what people call the silver tsunami. The baby boomers are retiring. And if there is a major shortage in skilled labor. There is about a $70 billion expectation of construction that's going to come around in the next two to three years. Construction is one of those things that can't be outsourced. It's got to be done right here. Because of Prop 39, we're able to serve the people from the community that want to go into the trades. And we're finding it's harder and harder and harder to find people that's qualified. So with these programs, it literally keeps the workforce going. The MC3, or the Multi-Craft Core Curriculum, is a curriculum developed by the international unions of the building trades. This is what we're looking for when we get somebody ready for apprenticeship. A lot of us don't go to college, right? So, you know, it, programs like this help people find real living wage jobs. Pre-apprenticeship programs are, are very useful in that it helps the students come to terms with what they're getting themselves into. So what we basically tell them, this is what you're gonna be doing every single day for the next 30 years. Is this what you wanna be doing? The craft I would like to go into is land survey. I want to be a painter, drywall finisher. Laborers would be my craft. If I'm leaning towards the plumbers, yeah. Carpentry and I want to um, become a craftsman. I want to actually start with finished work. It starts you off with the basics from the math, learning the different terminology with building and everything. Just learning stuff that I never knew existed. We walked past all these buildings, everything being built by construction workers and just having the knowledge of how it starts. You get a, a really broad understanding of, of labor history, which is critical. I want to learn a little bit about everything. And it's just like they prepare us physically and mentally. The construction industry can be very physical. We've actually had students uh, give up because of how hard it is. Well, we're doing PT. It's called uh, physical training. They're pretty much preparing us for all the hard work that we'll be doing. We get them first aid and CPR training, OSHA 10 cards. How uh, the safety of handling the tools, which is very important because we want to go home with our fingers. We're in the process right now of building small structures that have all the same components of any residential or commercial building. We learn how to do all types of different skills from measuring to hammering to sawing. We're out in the yard, we're doing, we're grading, but leveling, like that's really cool. You guys are gonna have to give me the answer. I'm basically teaching them life skills. How to stay on a job, how to keep their jobs. Anything from showing up on time, having the proper tools, proper communication skills. How to work with other people. How to work in close proximity with somebody else. Brotherhood, we all look out for one another. We come to work together, we get to know each other, we go through pain together, we grow together. During those 10 weeks, we're traveling to different union halls, the sheet metal workers, and the painters union, the plumbers union, the IBW Local 11, so they can start thinking about, okay, what is it that I'm gonna do? Visit like today at LAX is super valuable. Our students actually get to see what a live job site looks like. They get to see how the symphony of crafts working together flows. They get to see the cool hardware, the cranes, you know, the bulldozers, seeing people on lifts, seeing people on the roof, seeing just how exciting working in this industry actually can be. It's crazy, it's my first, first job site that I've ever visited where it was that extensive, that big, huge project. I'd like to see myself there. We took the students to three different sites. We started at the San Joaquin River Viaduct. It's in the city of Fresno to get the students out there to see what other people are working on, the men and women working on the project. I never really been so close to something, you know, so big, like the high-speed rail, and I just hope I can be part of it pretty soon. The pre-apprenticeship programs we've funded over the last six or seven years of Prop 39 have seen a lot of really great success on the individual level for formerly incarcerated, at-risk youth, people of color from communities that otherwise would have had no access to these kinds of wonderful middle-class jobs. We've seen success in getting more women into the trades and moving that, that small percentage to a larger percentage. 50% of the participants that we train are women. We train a lot of participants who are entering back into society from incarceration or people who are, have other barriers to employment. One of the big elements of success in terms of reduced recidivism is a good job and a paycheck. You know, we're coming out of prison. Most of us 
come out with no experience. And being a felon, I, there's not many jobs I can get. And construction is a career that they look past that. And that's what I like about it. We don't care what your background is, right? All we care is that you're willing to commit yourself to the craft. Actually, the ones that's been incarcerated are the ones that are really the best students because they pay attention and they know, and they know what they have to go back to if they don't make it here. They actually believe in us, and it's, that's what you need, people to believe in you and actually give you that second chance. But with this, they taking a chance on me. So, you know, I'm going to make them proud. I like to see our participants come through the program and then find themselves in a secure job where they have potential to, to grow, to see their confidence build from the beginning to the end of the program. It's great for the group that's in the class right now to see someone who's come through the program being successful and, and thinking to themselves, like, if they can do it, I can do it. To be honest, before I got to Richmond Bill, I was on a crash course. I was in and out of jail. I didn't believe I would ever have a job. I didn't believe in myself. Bill gave me the opportunity to go out and do something with my life, to change my life around. I wanted a career, and uh, I knew uh, going through the ARC boot camp, career apprenticeship boot camp, would uh, get me towards a, you know, a career instead of a job. I look what I'm doing now, like I'm working now. I was the first person that started working out the whole cohort, and everybody looked like, wow, like, he was the first person they grabbed. I went to the pre-apprenticeship, and now here I am working on high-speed rail. It's like really cool once you get out here because it's like you're a part of something that's, you know, it's kind of big. If we can build this model of access into really great jobs through pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship training and get more people who most need jobs into good jobs, we can move the needle on poverty in the state. Because it's in everybody's best interest to give these folks an opportunity to succeed and provide for themselves. It changes the individual's life, but it affects their families and neighborhoods. For a lot of our students, this is life and death for them. This may be the last opportunity they, they get before something drastic happens in their lives. This is definitely a blessing for me to help me have a second chance at life, a future, you know, to be able to provide for my family.